three people on. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of 620 Paranormal, aka Kansas Paranormal Podcast. I'm joined today by a very special guest who needs no introduction from me, but from himself. What's up guys, my name's Trevor. Welcome back to the Arctic Vet YouTube channel for those of you watching. Uh, today, I wanted to jump on Dylan's podcast here and talk about some of the experiences that I've had mainly in, in one house but throughout my life because uh, he's the man to go to about this stuff so don't do, just dive right on in yep go for it uh, let's talk about whatever you want to the first thing you want to talk about and we'll go from there and um, we'll also try to debunk some stuff because in, in paranormal you know um, as kids we're more prone to see because we we can't block it out in our brain so obviously um, a lot more people deal with experiences when they're younger and as they get older it kind of tapers off because in their mind they can be like oh it was just this or that right right exactly <clears throat> and some of it definitely think that we could figure that out so yeah. anyhow let's go back to when I was in fifth grade well, technically we started out in fourth grade so in fourth grade we moved from mcpherson to mound ridge and in this house <laughs> it used to be the uh, old pastor's house to the church that was just north of it and so this this house was a two-story house really really big nice house like three four actually four bedroom huge living room huge dining room real tiny uh, bathrooms <laughs> but upstairs so upstairs on the second story um, that's where all the bedrooms were at and then the very back bedroom from the stairs so the stairs were in the back of the house I gotta set you guys in where try to get you visually into where we're at here and so you go up these stairs and then you hit a landing you take a right there's three more stairs and then that's the whole hallway for the upstairs to the bedrooms <clears throat> so your first door is the bathroom second door on the right is a bedroom and then you have on the left at the same spot another door to the master bedroom walk back a little ways another door to master bedroom and another actual bedroom and this bedroom back here that's where I I had slept and remember the most about because it had it had a closet door right next to the main door and then an attic door and so that attic door is the is the key here um, you know every night I go to sleep and that door you know I I know I want to say you know it's just the wind moving the air flows moving this door because we had a big exhaust fan and, so this door would just creak all the time but the weird thing about it was that as i'm sleeping if i was laying where i could see that door nothing nothing was there but in the back of my mind i'm always scared i'm like oh gosh something's coming out of that door something's coming out of that door i roll over and somebody's sitting there like staring at me you get that feeling of someone's looking at you Man, oh, so every night it's like trying to go to sleep. There is okay. Do I look at the door and be scared that somebody is there? Because when I roll over, roll over, I get the feeling that somebody's watching me, or not. And it, so it having that alone, just sleeping in that room, was difficult. But after a while, because we lived there for, oh gosh, I want to say it's like six, seven years. It, uh, it is a long time that we lived there. So kind of got used to it. Just started to be like, hey man, I don't know what you are over there, but 
If you leave me alone, I'll leave you alone. <laughs> <laughs> and so, did most of this, did it happen like all the time throughout the year, or was it more like during winter months, summer months? Was all the it, time. So, it was a round. constant thing. Yep. Okay, <laughs> so with the door, I don't know how old the house is. Um, and oh, if there is any yeah. any wind drafts that come through the attic, you know, if you had an exhaust sure. vent. So with the door, <clears throat> obviously if the wind picks up in the attic, you know, there's obviously exhaust vents and stuff mm -hmm. to keep the, you know, the house from catching on fire. Yep. Um, any certain change in the wind draft, even if it's a light draft that comes through, is coming through a smaller hole, so you're creating more pressure, mm -hmm. which can cause that door to queak, would be the wind or other elements of, of weather. Right. Can tie into that. What about the feeling of somebody, <laughs> or something, I should say? So, a lot of times when people are younger and they see you know, silhouettes or shadow people, it's usually people from the family. It may not be like direct, like parents, parents. It could be like a cousin or somebody that had passed away mm -hmm. saying, hey, you know, I'm, I'm here to protect you. Something might be in this house. I don't know what, but I'm, I'm right. kind of making sure that you're gonna be safe from whatever spirit. And a lot of times, a lot of those people will see like shadows and stuff around 3 a.m., which, Hmm. ties back to the that Bible is, that the time that Christ sense. had passed on the cross would be 3 a.m. here in where we live at. So mm -hmm. that's why they call it the devil's hour because that's when Christ had passed on the cross. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of residual hauntings and stuff will happen at 3. So anywhere from midnight to about 5 a.m. is an increased spike. A spike in it. Well, that would make sense as to why I'd wake up some nights and it'd feel like somebody was right there by me, by my bed, which, you know, I just, those times, you know, you kind of wake up and it's like, okay, I totally sent you there. I'm not rolling around to look at you. I'm just going to stay here and fall back asleep. <laughs> yeah, and, and most of the times when kids see it, unless, you know, you're dealing with an active poltergeist, or a benevolent spirit, which is a mean spirit that's wanting to mm -hmm. cause you harm. You're basically trying to get you out of, out of what was their house because right, they're still right. attached to that because that's where they grew up. And especially if it was somebody who built that house for their family mm -hmm. and somebody else is in there now, now there's now it's that issue of why are you in my house? Right, right. Who are you? I don't know you. We're not related. Mm -hmm. Get out of my house. We're yeah. not family. I don't want you here. Be like having a stranger just walk in your house. Yeah. <clears throat> totally understand that so if we go I don't know when it happened like I don't remember what grade I would have been in but there was there's one night specifically that um, I don't remember if like everybody else was already asleep or they were my brothers were asleep and mom was downstairs watching a show or something but I go and I'm, I'm walking upstairs from the living room and as I'm walking up these stairs I just feel like I'm getting weighed down, weighed down, weighed down, hit my landing and I want to say that there were, there were 17 or 18 stairs in the first flight and then the landing and then the three steps up. Well, I get up to that landing, I turn right and I'm facing the three stairs and me as a kid tired, my head's down. And so I'm, I'm looking down, I go and I get ready to put my foot on that first stair. For some reason I look up and there's just a black figure, just a shadow, I guess you'd call it, just yeah. right there. And I'm like, uh, what, 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 do, you, what do you want? <laughs> That's all I could say. That's all I could say. I'm like, um, and we just, I just stood there for what seemed like five minutes probably was really 10 seconds but after i say that he just it just disappeared just disappeared yeah so and so i ran to my room and jumped in my bed <laughs> so there's two two most common types of obviously people seeing ghosts or apparitions is you have Shadow people, which is usually a black mass anywhere from four to seven feet in height. Mm -hmm. And then you have your silhouette, which you can make out like 
okay, I can tell by the facial features it's a man or it's a woman or a child. What it is. Gotcha. So, um, most of the time when people, when younger people will see silhouettes, you know, and they have imaginary friends and stuff is actually because the children can see that, mm -hmm. that apparition, that silhouette, that shadow. And so that's what the imaginary friends end up being because as adults, like I said, we Mixed. block it out more than the child can. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, in animals, like dogs and cats can also sense, mm -hmm. you know, because obviously, you know, your dog's not going to block it out. They're just going to see something. They're going to bark. Cats yeah. will meow or the, or the or hiss. And so basically, you know, when you have... A shadow is basically something is there, but you can't make out what it is. So, right, right. and <clears throat> that's what it would have been. Yeah, and so going up the stairs, um, spirits can also draw energy out of our bodies just like they can with lights, outlets, mm -hmm. and so that's why a lot of times when you when you're watching paranormal shows, they have EMF detectors. And for those that don't know what an EMF detector means, it's electric electronic magnetic field and it's a pretty common tool that they use in um, electrical work especially residential to kind of see where your power is coming from try to get down to where the short is that way you know hey this is where it's short at we need to go in here and fix this so you're not spending a thousand plus wire rewiring your whole house right. which necessarily <laughs> isn't a bad thing if you're if you're have a house from like the early 1900s or the 1800s or whatever because it's not going to be up to code the wires are going to be old they're going to you know yep. be used a lot which can cause you know house fires right man so uh the when you brought up the pets i remember we had a uh we had a black lab her name was bailey and uh she would she kind of like seemed like she patrolled the hallway up there and the downstairs because one of us would sleep downstairs in the bedroom there and so random times of the night you'd wake up and Bailey would be either right at your feet or she'd be laying right next to you and I remember in that room so I had a water bed yeah. and in that room she would it seemed like she would always around those times from what did you say midnight to about five yeah Somewhere in between there, she would find her way into my room. And so looking back now and hearing that, like, oh, crap. Yeah. Bailey was like, all right, here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to protect you, too. Like, I don't know what's going on, but something's something's in here. <laughs> yeah, so animals have a, a, a higher sense to stuff like that than humans do. Um, I looked into it a couple of years back. I can't remember exactly why it is, but they... They will have a heightened sense, you know, you'll go and you'll see videos where a dog will be laying down and then all of a sudden they jerk their head up and they have their ears standing up or, mm -hmm. you know, kind of like, what was that? Right. Because right. they sense something's there, but they don't know exactly what it is. Yep. Totally. I, and looking back with Bailey alone, like, definitely could see that because she would all the time just get up and what's like, like something's there, but... She'd have that stance of, oh, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to bark at whatever it is and yeah, try and help lord us. So, it goes back to, and a lot of times, yeah, especially with um, priest homes, um, you know, when a father passed, like, let's say, you know, in, in, in Catholicism, um, they're at the church and everything, and that's that's their last church that they're at. Because every four, I believe it's about every four years, they they get moved to another another church. They don't yeah. primarily stay at one unless they choose to. Um, and a lot of times when they go, they'll stay there because that's where they're comfortable at, and they want the people of the parish to know that just because I'm not here with you physically anymore doesn't mean I'm not here for you to talk to if you need someone to talk to. Right. And that so we didn't ever have like. At least that I remember, we didn't have anything like hurtful, harmful, just literally just the scary moment of like, oh my gosh, I see you kind of thing happened. Yeah. So it it seemed like maybe that was what was going on is like some of the people that had passed and that had known him were coming to his house to look for him and say, hey man, you know, we need to talk. Yeah. And they were, they were 
shocked when it was me. You know, like, what what do you want? What can I help you with? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, like I said, a lot of, you know, what they call devil hour hauntings, you know, 3 a.m. is the time that in the Bible that Jesus had, had finally bled out on the cross. He was mm -hmm. no longer breathing. You know, he didn't have a, a heartbeat at that time. And so, um, most, like, hauntings, most of the time are pretty peaceful. I mean, you have, you know, obviously bad things like poltergeist and, you know, people get pushed downstairs and stuff. But most of the time, it, it's just your family or, or people you were close with saying, hey, I'm here, I'm here to protect you. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's anything in this house that can hurt you, but I'm here, you know, right. just let you know I'm here kind of thing. That, so that... As we're talking more and more about this, I'm remembering more, and there was a, I want to say it was a basement. It was more like a, like a, cell, a wine, little wine cellar kind of thing, and uh, this door was in our downstairs bathroom, which that bathroom was right off the kitchen, so you walk into your kitchen and then take a right into the bathroom door, and right next to that, well, to the left of that door was the downstairs door. And the toilet is over here on the far side of the bathroom. So you're sitting on the toilet looking right at this door. And it always had seemed, and it could have just been like my imagination as a kid, but it always seemed like something was right there just waiting to be released, let go from that door. Yeah. So I never wanted to open that door. And when, you know, Ma's like, hey, go downstairs and grab so and so for, for a tool or, you know, pipes leaking or something. And every time, like, I had to make sure somebody was with me because I didn't want to go down there alone yeah. <laughs> kind of feeling thing. And, uh, but we still never, in that house, we never had anything harmful, though, even with that being the feeling like the more darker energy coming out from there yeah and so a lot of times you know you'll feel stuff and a lot of times um people will stick around in the afterlife because they felt like they went before their time or they weren't completed with their life's mission and and a lot of times that's what you'll see is that people are trying to you know finish you know what they feel they need to finish before they go all the way mm -hmm. over so basically it, it's what I consider, you know, uh, spiritual purgatories because they're at that point where, okay, I need to finish this so I know if I'm going to heaven or if I'm going to hell. Right. right. And um, most of the time, um, poltergeist, which is actually germ German for noise ghost, um, very few hauntings. Um, Sally House in Atchison is one of the most well-known cases of poltergeist. Mm -hmm. What? So... <clears throat> what would footsteps so when we're downstairs at that house like watching a movie as a family and we know everybody's there so we'll, we'll go back we're watching say Survivor you know that was like a family thing for us to do yeah. we'd watch Survivor every week watch the new episode air while we're watching this though I've got so I would have I would have had two brothers at the time in that house and so all three of us are downstairs. We're all watching this. Bailey's down there with us. So everybody's in this room. And all of a sudden you just hear like, like little kid footsteps upstairs, like running up and down the hallway. And as soon as you acknowledged it, that who's upstairs or said, what, what's that? Nobody's upstairs. It would stop. And then a little bit later though, it come back and that was just something that was just kind of off and on that we as a whole family would experience and it was you know sometimes like my brothers and I'd be like okay let's run upstairs real quick let's see by the time we get up there you know just silent yeah so a lot of times um, children's spirits will actually stay in a home too that they grew up in if they pass at an early age you know, and their, and their family continued to live there. That child will manifest this energy there because that's where it's familiar with everything. It's families there. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times, even after the parents go, the children will stay in that house because that's what they remember most of. They don't remember much outside of that house. Right. And so 
you know, you do have children's silhouettes, and they, they usually aren't harmful. There's been very few cases where, you know, people have been attacked by children's spirits. They're usually just there, and they and when they sense other ki other children are there, they're like, okay, I need a fr I want a friend to play with, and right, so they'll do right. stuff like that to get your attention to see if you'll play with them. Yep. And that, you know, thinking back, that's something I never thought to ask, like, hey, do you want to play this just to see what would happen? Like, maybe if they would... I've seen it before where some have, you know, made like a toy go off or move move something just so slightly. Yeah. And kind of, man, it would have been kind of cool to do that and see what could have happened. But again, you know, as a kid, you don't really think of that. Yeah. A lot of times when adults hear stuff like that, what they'll do is they'll set up like a ball or something that can roll. Hallway. and set it and wait to see if it comes down the hallway or if it, get, or if it moves mm -hmm. down the stairs without one of their kids messing with it. Yeah. But also with that, you know, if you're in an older house, you have to worry about wind drafts coming through because obviously if it's a light ball that we can push it and, right, you know, right. manipulate it to where it's it's going wherever. Mm -hmm. um, people commonly use just like those little bouncy, like the small yeah. bouncy balls you can get. Yep. Yeah, most retailers. Not gonna name drop any because we're not a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag hit us up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sponsor this podcast and Trevor's YouTube channel. It'd be great. I'm trying to make that Joe Rogan money. <laughs> Maybe we'll get him on here to talk about ghosts someday. <laughs> yeah, get on some DMT. <laughs> but no, um, on a serious note, we don't promote um, drug use. Um, and I will say this, I say this usually at the end of every podcast, if you're going through something, um, through some hardships mentally, um, you're not alone. There are people out there. Um, there's numbers you can call. Um, as Robin Williams said, I can't remember exactly how it went. Suicide is a permanent solution to temporary problems. So if you ever need anybody, um, Obviously, in the past podcasts, I've left an email. Um, you can reach out to me. It'll stay confidential. I won't go to anybody unless you absolutely want me to. That, I like that. That's a good thing to toss or throw out there. I try and, you know, on my videos lately, before this is never the case, but now I'm like, you know what? If you're going through a tough time, we all have seasons, but it's just that. It's a season. It's going to pass. And we're going to hit that summer season again, right? Everybody enjoys summer. It's nice and warm. You get your vitamin D in, whatnot. Yeah. But I always tell those people that are going through that season, just like I am. I, we all know I've been going through one heck of a season. Yeah. <laughs> and and so I, I want you guys to reach out to me. If, if you want to find me on my YouTube channel or reach out on my Instagram, you just shoot me a message. It's just an Arctic vet. And... I'll be there. Whatever the problem is, you just let me know. If you don't even really want to say what it is or just kind of mention, hey, man, something's going on, shoot it my way. Be yeah. glad to talk to you. Yeah, and if you're religious and you need Trevor to pray for you, he will He will definitely gladly do that for you. Um, Trevor and I have been good friends for 10 years. We met senior year in high school after he transferred to Hutch, and we've been close buddies ever since, and he's, he's a true friend, and if anybody ever need someone to talk to like i said get a hold of me get a hold of trevor uh everything will stay confidential unless you want us to go to somebody else about it right right you know thinking back that's kind of funny because i would go from mound ridge right to hutch and then boom me dylan the guy that now i'm doing podcasts with about ghosts in that mound ridge house <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so um and also um Ghosts can manifest energy from nearby water sources. So if you were by a river or, or anything, they can pull that because mm -hmm. that's obviously you can create energy out of flowing water. Right. You know, just like you have those old school houses that sit on the river that have mm -hmm. the winter, the little water wheel yes, to create yeah. energy that way. Huh. Interesting. So we could, how long do you want to keep going on here? Well, we can keep going as long I, as you could, want. We could, uh, all right, we can go to what is now my my mom's house. And 100% these ghosts, I, I know exactly who they are, and it's family. And, and it's hard to say how I know, but just the things that they, like, the locations that they're at when you see them, 
and kind of like what is going on, you know, okay, well, that's great grandpa. And all right, that's great grandma. Easy, right? Yeah. Well, so my, my great grandpa, he had passed away in, in that house. But the, the strange thing is, is when great grandma lived there, I, I could feel him in the room that he had passed away in. But when great grandma left and uh, she had passed away, not in the house, we moved in. But when we moved in, grandpa moved, great grandpa, I should say, he moved downstairs into his little uh, like workshop room that he had. And uh, the, the craziest thing is when we did move there, that's when I'm senior year high school. Yeah. And so I was sleeping down in the basement, you know, my water bed, I had a dresser with a TV on it and it was just completely open. There's, there's no other walls. There's a wall between my room and his room. And then he had a, a door on that room. That was it. But all the time it would be, you could hear a little tinkering in there and nobody, nobody slept in there. And I'm like, oh, you know, grandpa's working up late tonight. Like, don't even worry about it. Just keep playing my Xbox, you know? <laughs> and, uh, so the, some of my, my favorite parts about it were you go down the stairs and uh, you've been down there, right? No. You've been down, you haven't been down there. You, when you go down these stairs, his room is off to the right and mine was off to the left, but off to the right you just just glance quick glance over there and you could see his little shadow over there and i'm like oh cool grandpa's here and so you know i tell mom I'm like hey mom grandpa's downstairs like he's working and mom's like oh yeah i, I believe it I'm, i bet he is and so you know then once grandma's passing had gone and a little time's gone by she started to kind of show up in the house too and so like now it's, now they're both there. Like you can sense both of them, not really at the same time, but um, last year it had rained and rain doesn't get on my mom's porch, especially up by the house, by the door, because there's, there's like an, uh, what do you call it? I guess a big overhang over it. Yeah. Well, there was water there, but this water was in the shape of a heart. And that that was it. Like there was no other water anywhere else, just in that one spot. And so mom came home and she seen that and she's like, Trevor, what do you what do you think about it? I was like and she goes, I think it was grandma and I'm like, Well, I, I bet you it was. You know, I didn't I didn't see it, but I I bet it was. She's probably telling you, you know what, you're going through a hard time. She loves you. She's here. She, she knows you can do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so a lot of the times, like I said earlier in the podcast, um, when spirits are attached to something, they won't leave. That they, they, that's their final resting place. And when somebody passes in the room, their energy will stay there for however long they feel they want to be there. And then eventually they'll go over. Um, right. So to me, it sounds like he was kind of waiting for you guys to get there. He was Maybe making so. sure you guys had made it safe, you know, and everything, mm -hmm. so he can he can go back and work in his workshop. Right. And so a lot of times that'll happen if you're moving into a family member's house that passed away, if it got inherited and passed down through the family, mm -hmm. they'll stay there to, to make sure that that family got there safe, everything went okay, you know, everything mm -hmm. got moved in. Right. That makes sense. And so, more often or not, and especially if you see silhouettes, um, as you know, um, I talked to you, uh, my grandfather had, had passed last Saturday. Mm -hmm. A few weeks before that, it was, oh, probably a little after midnight. It wasn't too late into the night. I had woke up and I saw somebody, a silhouette, I could make out it was a man because they had an old trucker cap on. Yeah. I was looking out my window and I said, what <laughs> I went back underneath and tried to go back to sleep and rolled over I wasn't there so a lot of times too is you'll see the silhouette of a family member before they go because mm -hmm. they want 
to have at least, you know, if you can't make it to scene, they want to have that, that last moment with you to say, right. I'm not hurting anymore, it's going to be okay, kind yep, of thing. Yep, exactly, exactly. I don't, I don't know that I've had that happen yet, but I'm sure that someday yeah. it, it'll, I'll have that and it, just like yours. Yeah, that's, that's it'll yeah, hit. yeah, it'll hit and it sucks <laughs> and you know, I'm, I'm glad my grandpa's not hurting and... You know, and I'm just glad that he's in a better place now. I'm glad oh, he's yeah. not hurting anymore. Right, right. And that was that was the thing with my great grandma. She was suffering through. Oh gosh, I, she had too many cancers, so she was taking cancer medication, trying to you know help ease the pain and try to get rid of it. And, and finally, it just it got her. Yeah. But. At the same time, I was like, you know what? She's in a much better place. She's not hurting. She's not. She's gonna start looking great again, and not, yeah, not have this pain. But, yeah, that. So that's that's the that's the Mount Ridge house. <laughs> great house. Looks a lot better today. I drive by it every now and again, and uh, that's Mom's house now. And, and other than that, I don't. I can't think of any other homes that had anything like that. The the old house, the house on 43rd. This one I heard uh, that you shouldn't, if, so, if you hear knocking at your door, you shouldn't say, come on in. Never knew that before that house, right? Yeah. And I, I did that all the time. You know, I hear somebody knocking, and you're like, okay, you know, come on in. I know you're coming over. Well, the bad thing about that is if nobody's there knocking on it, and it's something else, and you just welcomed them into your house. Yeah. And so I there's a... What I wanted to try there, because it, it seemed like something might have been there, but it was only it only came out when the boys were gone, and it was just me. When it was just me in that big house, it... Something it felt like something was there, but I never could. Yeah, I was only there for a year, so I didn't have you know, there wasn't much time to actually, yeah, take it all in and whatnot. And my guess for that would be, would be somebody telling you, Hey, this isn't where you're meant to be at in life. I'm here to check on you because I know you're going through some stuff, but this isn't exactly. where you're meant to be in life. You're not meant to live in this house for longer than a year or whatever mm -hmm. it was. That's, that's them yeah. saying. Okay, you should you should probably uh get to moving and, and yeah. go somewhere else. Yep, yep. And that looking back, just shoot, you know that was what December we all we moved out of the the yeah. old house. So yeah, not too long ago. But uh, I I always wanted to try and put a candle in front of the door, and I forget what you do. You light it or um. Oh, there, there's something you do. You light it and you ask them if you want into this house, you have to blow the candle out so that you can tell if something's there um, at your door. Yeah. But the candle, um, it's, it's, there's another thing. If if something was already in the house, the candle would do something different. But I can't, I'll have to look it up and find it again. Yeah. But that was something I wanted to try, but I'm like, man, I don't, me personally, I don't want to, um, stir the pot, so to say. Yeah. With with any spirit, whether it's good or bad, I don't. Right. You're, you're definitely here. If you make yourself present to me and I can sense you, got it. Yeah. If, if I'm not sensing, I don't want to go digging. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, there's this thing in indigenous tribes here in America and up in Canada and you know everywhere else have used. Um, and what you can do is if you feel a spirit, an unwanted spirit, or, you know, you just want it gone, even if it's a good spirit or a bad spirit, what you can do is cleanse your house with sage. You burn sage oh, and you right, walk around right. to each room. Um, it's been around for who knows how long. Mm -hmm. And then also, if you want to tell if there's something in your house, you can uh, put up um, infrared heat cameras mm -hmm. or what you can do is you can take a flower and set it down. Don't step on it, but like set it down by your doors and your windows. 
you know, overnight and go to your room and go to sleep. And if you see footprints and it was just you, you either were sleepwalking or there is something in that house with you. Right. Yeah, that isn't a bad idea. Hmm. So that, that's something. And you can also do it with vehicles, too, because there is a, um, I think it's here in Kansas, I believe. Um, uh, a school bus. This was years back. Years back. I think maybe... I think around the 1950s, maybe even before then, there was a, a bus of children coming back and they got stuck on the railroad track. And unfortunately, some of the kids have passed in the accident. And they say if you go onto this track and you stop your vehicle and you put a flyer on it, you'll you'll see handprints on it. The children huh. that are still there trying to, trying to get out wow. and stuff. Yeah. Wow. That's wild. Yeah. That's something I couldn't do. I mean, I would be terrified that at that point, then I'd become the victim of getting hit by a train too. Yeah, and so that goes <laughs> like with, can't remember if I've told you about Theorosa's Bridge or not. It's between um, Newton and, well, I guess it'd technically be Park City. Hmm. I don't think no, so. Not Park City, Valley Center, Valley Center, which is just north of Wichita. Yep. And so this this bridge, which it's been redone, used to be an old wood bridge, like out here on Forty Third. Oh yeah. And so um, there's mul there's two variants of the story that I know of. I'm sure there's more. Um, but one of the stories I know is Theorosa was a maid or something. I can't remember exactly to the mayor of the town at that time. Mm -hmm. Well, he had gotten her pregnant. He was married, so she was a mistress. And the townspeople found out after she had baby, they took the baby and threw her baby off the bridge into the creek system below. And so Theorosa jumped in looking for her baby and it said, if you say her name three times mm -hmm. and then Theorosa, I have your baby, she will come up. Now, I've, uh, my buddy Chevy, who I'm hoping to have on the podcast eventually, has been out there and he said it's a hit and miss paranormal spot. He said he's had nights where he's had activity like no other, mm -hmm. and then other nights where it's nothing. Yeah. And so, huh. and that's the weird thing too with paranormal stuff is that some occurrences happen year round and then some will only happen during, you know, a certain season or a certain month of the year. Right, right. <clears throat> so, uh, Speaking of like making it heightened, this is just what what I thought. So I personally I cannot watch the any kind of paranormal movie. Now the paranormal like ghost hunter shows. Yeah. I I enjoy watching that because you know I kind of learn a little bit more about it and things that okay you know what this spot isn't it's just the electrical. Yeah. Or it's just a a wind draft or. So, something like that but the paranormal movies even though it's a movie and you know they're doing this on Hollywood and whatnot yeah when I watch one of those whether it's me just being absolutely terrified of it or if it's actually happening I have more bad experiences with things after one of those movies because I'm like okay you know I know this is a movie I know that they have all this rigged up. Yeah. They're doing all this, but this stuff is real. It it literally can happen, and it does happen. And I start having bad like bad dreams, and things come to me, and I'm like, uh, what's going on here? Yeah, and and that's the thing with like you know people who have watched the paranormal activity movies think this girl and obviously they had the disclaimer at the end this wasn't real we got you kind of thing yeah but then again like you said it is real and there are movies that you know are based on tree events and stuff like that you've got mm -hmm. uh the animal horror you've got um exorcist you've got yep. the exorcism of, exorcism of emily rose you know you've got the conjuring mm -hmm. um Annabelle, you've got all these stuff and it can happen, but I feel like when Hollywood gets a hold of stuff like that to make, you know, movies like Paranormal Activity and whatnot, right. when people try to talk about it, they're like, oh, you're just making that up because you have yep. 
yep. th these smut films that are poking fun at it, and it's like, exactly. You know, not every not everybody's gonna have experiences, and you know, some people are gonna be skeptics. You know, just like with everything else in life. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I'm not one of those people who is going to force you to believe in the paranormal. And and another misconception with paranormal is that people think it's just ghosts. They it can be, you know. Like in Mexico, La Chupacabra, or it can be mm -hmm. aliens. There's multiple realms within paranormal, but people just jump to the conclusion that, oh, it's just ghosts. And it's right, not the case. Right, right, right. That makes sense. Maybe, uh, I remember when, but so when I, before ever paranormal movie, that like that first movie came out, that I remember one time, like, um, Oh, what is that show? There's a show. I want to say it was A Thousand Ways to Die. That's what it was. Oh, on uh, Comedy Cent or was it Spike MTV? TV or something like yeah, that? Yeah, it was on Spike, yeah. Uh, anyhow, so one of the ways was that somebody had been strangled and they put like a little imp looking thing. Like uh, for me, when I think of an imp, I'm thinking RuneScape. Because they have little yeah. amps, that like little little devil looking things that are just super small, and so they showed a picture of this thing choking the person, you know, and it's just it's not actually happening, um, in the in their show, but they're just uh, showing it like a movie, and so that that had stuck with me, and every time I had watched a paranormal movie, that's what my dream would be about would be about a little imp would come visit me in my bed while I'm sleeping and I'm like get out of here what are you doing no 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 <laughs> so I'm like give me that leg boy <laughs> and so for for that main reason alone um, that's that's why you know girls you have girlfriends you you go on dates or whatever you come to the house you want to watch the show they want to watch a scary movie because oh scary movie you can hug me hold me blah 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 i am not that guy i will not watch a scary movie like that with you <laughs> for I, that reason <laughs> I, I don't watch you know scary movies with girls anymore because i got punched in the face because of, of a oh, jump scare no. in a movie oh, no. now this is the first time i've ever talked about this i was i was interested in this girl we weren't dating we were like going on dates and stuff right and she right. wanted to watch a movie so i'm like okay cool and she's like we should watch this okay i've never seen it i haven't either okay so and you know it's one of those cheesy like spoof paranormal movies where yeah. there's like just little cheesy ass gump scares yep and uh they had got to this part or no it was it was scary movie too it was the part where, like, the clown, like, gets uh, one of the Wayne brothers, like, under the bed and, like, chokes him, and, like, they start beating the clown, and it shows one of the Wayne brothers under the bed, and the clown reaches in, and she, like, turned around, and she <laughs> hit me because she was scared, and I told her, I'm not hanging out with you no more, and I haven't talked to her ever since, dude. Oh, no. I left a good shiner. Oh. So, men, take tips. If you're watching scary movies with girls, make sure you have, like, a kickboxing, like, helmet or whatever yeah, they're called. Yeah, on yeah. your face. So if you get hit, you're not having a shiner. Oh, oh dang. Luckily, we never had anything like that happen, but... Oh, dang. Well, all right, ladies and germs. This is going to do it for this episode of 620 Paranormal Podcast. Uh, I'd like to thank Trevor and give him a huge shout out. I will leave um, his YouTube channel and Instagram handle in the description for this video. So if you're seeing this on Spotify or wherever you can see the description, look for his name. Go show him some love on YouTube and Instagram. And as always, stay spooked. All right, for those of you watching on YouTube, thank you guys for tuning in. I know we haven't done anything like this before, but I talked to my guy Dylan here. I was like, man, we got to do something. You're doing a podcast. I want to help promote it. I want to help bring some more people to it. I know I'm not the only one out there with some experiences or even, even just an idea or a question about it. So I wanted to help Dylan spread out, reach out a little more. And if you guys could go down in my description, click that link to his podcast, go give this one a listen, 
or you could go ahead and check out some of his many other ones you have how many do you have out there four you've got he's got four out there so this one is going to be what the fifth one yep this will be this will five. be the fifth one so some of these like when he started i was like dude we gotta i gotta get in on this action because i've got just just little experiences like we talked about here that i kind of want to dive into figure out talk about and document and you know spread the word try and see what others think others think so anyways check out the description click on his link down there and watch some listen to some of his podcasts if you guys enjoyed this video smash that thumbs up button don't forget to click that red subscribe and as cohen would say ring that bell ding <laughs> thanks for watching have a great day and we'll catch you in the next one